Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome to my channel. My name is Grace from Diamond Paint with Grace. If this is your first time stumbling on my channel, I would love for you to stumble, stay and subscribe by hitting the subscribe button it's down below on your screen, next to which is a notification bell, which will go ding each and every single time I upload a new video. I have something that I have been thinking to do for quite some time now, peeps. Uh, before we get into what all that is about, Let's throw some love out to the Patreons of the channel, those that have bought me a coffee on the Buy Me A Coffee program. Come with me, guys, as we throw some love out to these peeps, and I will see you on the flip side. Come with me. Okay, guys, so, Welcome, welcome one and all. If this, um, if you're new to diamond painting, this is for you. If you are a um, veteran diamond painter, I would love for you to stick around, watch the video for no other reason other than I would love your input and your contribution in the comments below as well. Now, what is this video all about? This video, let me put my sleeves down, it's a little bit cold. This video today is intended for those that are just starting in the craft, it's come to my attention that there are heaps and heaps of people joining our community and joining this craft on a daily basis. And I see so many of the same questions being asked over and over and over and over again on all sorts of social media uh, platforms uh, in addition to here on YouTube. So I thought I'd put a whole bunch of uh definitions and frequently asked questions together in one tight neat little package for you now this is not a how-to video it is a what is video so in other words it's uh, definitions terms definitions uh, uh phrases that you might hear getting thrown around by either youtube creators or those that are posting things on instagram or on uh, Facebook. So I'm going to just go through uh, what is this and show you perhaps a, a um, an example of it. And then if you wish to know a how to like further explanation that I now invite you to put it down in the comments and I myself, if you want me to show you, I'm happy to try and put some sort of video together for you. Uh, if not, there are many how to videos on, on the YouTube platform already. So this is how we're going to start. And again, this is going from complete basics. So let's go strap yourselves in, grab a cup of coffee, grab an adult beverage, whatever it is that you want to do. And let's go. So why don't we start with what is diamond painting? Okay, what is diamond painting? Diamond painting is actually uh let's and we're going to get into i've got a whole bunch of props over here so diamond painting essentially is um it's essentially based on the craft of cross stitching in the sense that you have a picture which is color coded and instead of cross stitching with thread you're going to put diamonds or drills down what do i mean by that okay so this is one example of many millions of diamond paintings that are out there. This particular painting here is from Crafties. It's a Sybil Art. I've already started it. So I kind of thought this would be a really good example to use throughout our, our conversation today. All right, so this is a canvas. This, if you hear what is a canvas, this is what we call typically a canvas, all right? So, and you do get all sorts of varying uh, canvases. There are those that are very, very stiff. There are those that are very, very soft. Essentially though, this is a canvas, diamond painting. You can see there is a pre-printed picture on here and uh, these are and this is partially started okay so you can see up here I've already got some diamonds on there and there and this is not okay so let's go with uh, what um, that this is the canvas what is a diamond or a drill okay well these are your diamonds and your drills see these little dots here so let me get you some examples so this is just some that are already uh, packaged Okay, they have not been um, taken out or anything like that. These here are what we call diamonds 
okay, or drills. Uh, there's two ways that uh, people refer to them. They are diamonds or drills. They, these particular ones are from a diamond dots kit that I haven't kitted up yet. And you can see there is all different colors and they come in what we typically call a train or uh, people nickname these things all sorts of things but they are individually bagged okay so these are what we call diamonds or drills that's what they are okay the different and then we have different types so this particular one is a round can you see that they're round in shape they are round then we have and I'll get them over here Squares, can you see that these are squares? These are my special drills, we'll get to that definition in a minute, but can you see that the shape on these is actually square? As opposed to these, which are round. Okay, so we have round and we have square. We also can then be spoilt sometimes inside a kit with what we call special shapes and that's where we get these ones here so we have special shape ones we've got a big one here we've got these ones here i have over here some that i have in my long-term storage just some other special shapes that you can get inside your kit okay so they're the sort of things that typically these are not all to, I mean they're very popular but generally most kits will come with a string of just these normal either round or squares okay now so you've now got your canvas okay typically it's not going to come half I mean this is half started and it's for demonstration purposes okay so along with your painting you will get what is called a tool kit and there are variations to the wazoo with toolkits. Okay, you may get something as basic as something, let me turn this around. You may get something like this. You may get something like this. You may get something oh, like this. Like this or like this. Uh, or even something like that. Okay. Essentially, a toolkit, this is your very basic of basic toolkits. And if you're new to diamond painting, essentially, to tip, dip your toe in, this is all you need to start. And essentially, the essence is the same in each of them. You have a tray, what's called a tray or a boat is what this is called. This is your wax and this is your diamond painting pen. Okay, we're going to go through each of those in a minute. But as I said, you do have variations in depending on what company to buy you or buying from on how they do come. Okay, so this one's come in a beautiful organza bag. It's come with a very, it's a specialty pen included, some washi tape. We're going to get into all of that. Don't worry, we're going to drill it all the way down for you guys. So, what is a pen? A diamond painting pen when you're new to diamond painting is essentially this little baby here. So let's break out our basic kit. This is your basic pen, okay? At the end, there is a hole. Okay. Or, oh, is it going to focus? There is a hole in here. A tiny one at that, but there is one. Is it going to focus? Probably not. Yeah, can you see that? This is what you're going to use to pick up your diamonds or your drills, okay? In your toolkit, you get your boat or tray. This is what you're going to tip your diamonds into. And then you will shake, 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 and they will line up. You will also get wax. Oh, what we typically call a plate of wax, okay? Now this wax, keep in mind, it does have a thin, clear film on it of plastic. See that? Okay, lift that off. And what you essentially do, even though this is not going to be a how-to video, what you do is you get your pen, you dip it in there, take some wax out. There is some wax on the end of that pen now. Can you see how it's red? 
in there. Oh, she's not focusing. Okay. <coughs> Pardon me. And you're ready to go. Okay, so that is your pen. That is your wax. And that is your tray. Again, as I said, there's variations in everything. So what else is there to know when you get a kit that you may be thinking, what is that all about, Gracie? Oh, I should have left that out. Uh, you get potentially, and they fell on the floor, so I'll grab it out of this one, what we call a squishy, okay? A squishy, a finger grip, because if you're going to be sitting there playing with your diamond painting for hours on end and you've just started, if you don't get one of these in your kits, I would highly recommend you go to your local dollar store or somewhere and just, they're not expensive or what it, at all. But these, they're called squishies because they squish, see, squish, squish, squish. They go on your pen to assist with comfort. Okay, so that is your squishy. Uh, the wax is used, as I said, to lay down your, it makes, it makes the end of your pen sticky in order to pick up your diamonds, okay? Now, wax can come as specialty wax like this. This was uh, given to me, or I won it in a giveaway. Uh, however, typically I, use really the wax that comes in the kits. So I love me a caddy of wax. I call these caddies of wax, okay? You can get white wax. You can get pink wax. And in this particular one, if I can grab it out, you can even get, come on, come out. Come out, come out wherever you are. Blue wax, okay? So I'm dying to try that blue wax. I think in one kit recently, I even had some purple wax come. So that's what we mean by wax, okay? Wherever you keep it, just make sure that it is uh, kept dry because, oh, beg my pardon, covered in some way. Either keep that film on there when you're not using it or put it in a caddy if you've got one in order for it not to dry out. So that is your toolkit. That is your basic toolkit, your basic basic, and then depending on what company, it may come with variations, and we'll get into the variations as, as the video goes on. Upgrading a toolkit, well, a diamond painting pen can be one of those that you saw there. Typically, they're either pink or clear, like this one in here. See that clear one that I took out? You may even get a blue one that's in there. As time goes on and you get to uh, enjoy this craft, then you may extend into specialty pens and you may see creators using pens such as these on their, on their videos. These are, mine are handcrafted uh, and hand turned. They are beautiful to use. They've got the ends in which you can interchange your um, it's going to come out easily now, is it? No. Let's pull this one out. See how that one pulled out there? And then you just put it in. It's got a bit of gunk on it, but it doesn't matter. And then you can just interchange them as you need them. Okay. So that's some of them. And just to give you an idea, these are some of my others. There's a gazillion, gazillion out there for you to uh, go shopping with. As I said, these are just some of mine, and I just sit them to the side over there. So that is a diamond painting pen. It is used, these are, are typically, once you get to know that you love the craft, these become really, really attractive because they're ergonomic, they fit well in your hand. If you find a nice company that you like, you will find that you will end up, maybe, maybe not, uh, hedging towards one of these and then you've got these other ones like this pink one here which may or may not come in your kits as I showed previously so that's a that's a toolkit and um, um, essentially what is an a, a toolkit 
Now, you may hear people turning around and talking about DMC codes, and you're thinking, what's a DMC code? Okay, so I did a bit of research on this. Now, DMC actually stands for Dolphus Meg et Compagnie. Yes, Dolphus Miet et Compagnie, DM, and it's been shortened to DMC. And it's actually the Alsatian textile company created in Mulhouse, France in 1746. Okay, uh, these colours were put together in a DMC uh, or in a particular order by someone called Jean Henry Dolphus. And back in the 20th century, it was known to be the biggest textile group in Europe. And that's where DMC, the term DMC comes from. It's actually an abbreviation for the uh, company that, origin that uh, made all the colours. So how many colours are there? There's actually over around 500 odd colours of the D in the DMC range. Approximately, give or take, 489 of them are used within the diamond painting uh, community and I believe also cross stitch. Going back to our canvas, if you have a look here, this is what we call a legend. Now, I call it a legend. Some people call it a schematic. Some people call it a colour chart. <clears throat> There's all sorts of things that these are referred to, okay? In my videos, I'll call it a legend. Uh, it could be written as schematic. Oh, here it's actually written schematic, okay? Uh, or a colour chart. And you will see on here that they're numbered 1 through to 18. Then there is a uh, symbol. And then there is a colour. Now this colour here, not this one, not this one, not this one, or this one, like leave out these extraneous ones, these ones here, but these top ones are referred to as DMC codes. And each of these numbers refers to a colour on the DMC range. Each of these symbols that you see here correlate to a symbol on your chart. So you look for the symbol here, you look for what it correlates to on your colour chart and you then place that colour on your on your canvas. Again, this is not a how-to, it's more a what is, okay? So when you hear us talking about schematics, legends, colour charts, this is what we're referring to here. Okay, so let's talk a bit about the canvas. What is a drill field? or a diamond painting field. Normally we call it a drill field. A drill field is basically what you are going to be diamond painting. So this is your field, this is your work field. That's already done, but otherwise it would have been the entire canvas, okay? Uh, but this is your pasting area or your drill field. And you will often hear us say, let's go down and have a look at the drill field. And that's when I particularly will take you all the way down and we have a look at this drill field here. And what we see is the field, and it's all full of symbols, okay? So, what do we mean by confetti? Confetti is when you have a lot of colour change in one small area, okay? So, this particular canvas is majority of colour blocking. However, and what is colour blocking? Colour blocking is when you have large areas of just one colour to diamond paint. Can you see how that's predominantly one colour with just a few scattered in there? Or in here, this is what we call colour blocking. See all that? That's all one colour. This is all one colour. Again, all one colour. That is colour blocking. Up here where you can see it's already been completed, this is all one colour. All one colour. The flower. That is colour blocking. Allow me to get you an example of confetti. Here you can see there is what we call confetti. There is a lot of symbol changing in one small area. Okay, lots of different symbols in one particular small area. This is not really heavy, heavy confetti, which is uh, where you'll have 
you could have up to 30 or 40 colors in a very small area but this is what we call confetti this particular canvas goes all the way from confetti here and then if we go down here we get color blocking see all those symbols that are the same okay that is how we d differentiate between color block and confetti keeping on with canvases and what to expect on a canvas okay sometimes you will hear us call them scalloped and surged scalloped is see that beautiful finish in the end that you know the doo -doo -doo, that's scalloped now it's come to my attention apparently there is a bit of um debate in the community and i'm not here to debate i'm just going to say that to say that it's surged also means that it should be sewn through these holes however i don't know i don't i haven't looked up the definition i'm terribly sorry uh, to not be able to pre be able to provide you any clarity but that's definitely scalloped and this these little holes here help the canvas to stop from fraying okay you don't want your canvas to fray your canvas may come like this or it may come oh, oh, oh. Mm. let me just get all this out Or it may come just plainly cut like this okay depending on the quality of the actual canvas itself it may or may not fray up to you on uh, how you deal with that sometimes you can just put some tape around the it around the outsides just to stop that if it does happen I've, I've only ever had one that's frayed to be honest and I've got lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of canvases okay so keeping on with the canvas we talk about what is stickiness so in diamond painting oh, oops beg that pardon in diamond painting there are two types of diamond painting canvases beg my pardon three types but only two that i've worked with thus far this is what we call poured glue Typically, you will know that it's poured glue because it has a clear cover, okay? And then we have what is called double-sided adhesive, which is this one, something like this, which will be covered by an opaque cover like this. I try to stay away as much as I can from double-sided adhesive. Uh, it's not as forgiving to work with as a, a poured glue. That's a story for another time. Uh, but these are the two so you've got poured which is clear clear cover and double-sided adhesive okay double-sided adhesive is that they actually lay out the adhesive on the canvas and then they put this opaque cover on the top to cover it and you will see that there is the adhesive coming off the edge here okay so this is a double-sided adhesive whilst we are talking about canvases let's talk about what's a river what's a bubble typically you will get those on um, a double-sided adhesive that's what they're known for and can you see the back of this canvas this all spells trouble if you see this on the back of a poured canvas poured glue canvas you're not going to panic as much or you shouldn't panic as much but on here this will spell trouble you cannot roll these back so that brings now to what is a river and a bubble let me show you what that is see these see this damage in here they are what we call rivers in the canvas the the, the adhesive has dipped down okay it's dipped down like that and what that means is when you lay down your diamonds they are not going to sit nice and flush. Can you see those rivers? Okay, so that's what we refer to as rivers. Again, there are videos on how to tackle that and how to fix it, but that's the definition of what a river is on a canvas.
What do me what burr, 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 let me get my words. What do we mean by a popping drill? Typically, popping drills will happen over a few reasons. One could be if you are doing a square diamond painting, okay, using these square diamonds. And if the if you're let me get this out of the way, if your pacing area is not charted correctly and the diamonds are too squished up together, they will pop. They will come off your canvas, okay? They will just come off your canvas. Equally, if you have a poured glue canvas or even a double-sided adhesive, if the glue surface or the sticky surface is not adequate, they will come off, they will pop off, okay? So that then means, what do we mean by sealing a canvas? Sealing a canvas, there are many techniques out there, many a video out there for you to go and investigate. Some people will complete their canvas and they will use a sealant over this to make sure that it stays down, okay? That's what we mean by sealing a canvas. It's different people's preference on what they want to do with each of their uh, paintings. There are some that will not do it at all. There are some that will pick and choose which ones. It's completely up to you. Okay, so that's what we mean by sealing a canvas. That's what we mean by um, popping, di popping drills. They will just come straight off your canvas. See how that's, these diamonds are not coming off? Okay, if this was a really poorly made canvas, they would just come straight off or they would come off even if I ran my fingers over the top like so. I could feel them coming out okay so let's talk about a few other bits and pieces what is a diamond painting tray we touched on it a bit in in addition to upgrading your pens you may also upgrade your trays these are not anything special uh, at all they are ones that have come with my diamond painting kits okay you can get square ones you can get these that have got a little gate here there's multitudes of them out there you may hear some people talking about a mosfet boat uh, or tray and that's this one here okay it's got a funnel it's actually and it's got the word mosfa i should actually look that up what that means mosfa m-o-s-f-a okay uh, that's what we call a mosfa boat or tray again that's what we use to uh, to put our diamonds in my goodness my words my words my words let's pop that over there so washi tape where do, where, where do we start you're probably wondering what is this here that is washi tape or it's actually this particular one is actually just some glitter tape but it doesn't matter it's doing the same thing why do we use washi tape well washi tape is used for most and for all of us pretty much to section off a canvas and it allows for you to I'll just as I said I'm not going to do a, a complete demonstration but you it's a it's not it's not sticky tape as such but it is sticky it's easily removable I have I was using this years and years and years and years ago way before diamond painting <laughs> ever discovered it trust me I was using washi tape in my um scrapbooking days so I'm very very familiar with washi tape but essentially you just place it on your canvas wherever whatever section whatever size section you feel is capable okay do that cut and you're done and then this particular canvas I've been doing it in halves so there are those that wish to do it in exact measurements me i'm not that fussy i i just section like that so then what i will do is i will cut along here peel that back and then i will work within this section here and then the plastic is there and if i'm not finished this section then i'll just lay it back over until i'm done the other thing that washi tape is used for is if the glue comes past your edge here past the diamond pacing edge there are those that will stick it along the edge here to prevent okay to prevent all the f fluffies and and hairs and all the bugs and everything sticking to any glue that might be on the outside there so that's what we call 
that's what washi tape is and that's predominantly what it's used for if you have any other comments or contributions as far as what you do with your washi tape please feel free to put them down in the comments below then we come to release papers. These release papers, again, were part of my uh, winnings with Bev B from Bev B Diamond Paints. And these are what we call release papers. They are one-sided. You can see there's a bit of a shine on the back. <coughs> Pardon me. There's a bit of a shine on the back. These are used, some people don't like the plastic. So some people, what you can do is rip off all of the plastic and then providing you've got enough of these, you can actually use these to section off your painting and just, and they will stick to that side and peel off very easily like so. Do not put them the other way around because you will cause damages. Um, they're not designed for that, okay? However, if you do them like so, just as an example, some people do them like this so that as they move along in their painting, they reveal more and more of their painting and it's sort of a gratuitous, well not a gratuitous, it's sort of gratifying in that respect that you get to reveal each section. The other reason people do that is they don't like the crinkling, the sound of the crinkling paper. I don't mind it myself, so I'm fine from that perspective. And there are those that are sensitive to that sound, which is absolutely fine. Release papers, you can find them on, on AliExpress, Amazon, uh, some diamond painting stores have them. Just always remember to put them on the correct side down on your painting. The other thing that um, can be used is something called parchment paper. Do not use baking paper, okay, or wax paper, one of them. Yeah, and just be very mindful on which, on what you use if you're going to use a type of generic uh, type of release paper. All right, what do we mean we buy uh, with, with diamonds? There, there are certain things that I look for when I'm looking at the quality of diamonds, okay? One is, what, what do we mean by static? Okay, so let's have a look at our friends over here again. Let me bring you down. Now, these diamonds here, they look to be okay. All right, they're sitting nicely in the bag. They're behaving really well. Let's have a look at these grey ones. These grey ones here, if I do that, and I've, I've chosen this particular brand because Diamond Dots, unfortunately, one, although their diamonds are absolutely spectacular, the one thing that they're notorious for is actually static. And I can see in here that there is actually static in, in the diamonds. And what happens is when these are poured out onto a onto a tray, they're just going to kaboom, bounce out everywhere. All right, there is ways to combat static. The best way is to put a dry, a little piece of a dry sheet in there and that will take it out. See how these are sticking? See how they're sticking there? I didn't want to particularly take them out. If I bust open this bag, then I've got to deal with it. And, and that's not what today's all about. So that's what we call static -y diamonds. What do we mean by oily diamonds? Okay, well, I've got one here. These are oily diamonds uh, from an old canvas. And I'm going to take them out just so that you can see. We don't get them often, but we get them often enough. And these are really... They're clumpy and they're disgusting. These were unusable. See how they're all clumped together? There is a way to combat the clumpiness, but these are, these are oily. And I, I haven't done one, but I will be doing a video on how to combat oiliness and what to do with them if you get stuck with them. Fortunately, this company sent me out replacement diamonds, which was good. But that's what we call oily diamonds. You can see that they've got a real yucky, oily feel to them there or look to them because you can't feel them. That's a dry sheet, by the way. I had put that in there in the hope that that might help. I did it as an experiment. You can see that clearly it didn't <laughs> help. Um, but that's what we call oily diamonds there. So let's pop that aside. Another common question is, what are ABs? Well, I'm glad that you asked. Perfect example in this particular combination of colors. 
can you see on here and these diamonds here have an extra luminescence about them an extra coating where they're shimmering and shining and twinkling as a don't don't mind the color schemes but these are gray they're still twinkling and sparkling but when you put them next to an ab can you see the difference in that so these are what we call aurora borealis you'll hear us talking about them all the time and most of us creators go absolutely berserko when we hear about them uh, being contained within our kits because they are sp special diamonds uh, that when you put them on your canvas not only do these twinkle and sparkle on their own even more so than their these ones but when you put these down on your canvas the uh, diamonds around them are going to twinkle and sparkle even more so so if we go back to our example here if we go back to our example these white ones here are aurora borealis these this red one here in her lips are aurora borealis I'm trying to make sure that you can see that properly and that it's there we go so even though these are twinkling and sparkling these are normal diamonds you can see that there is an extra extra glimmer and shine from the white ones here the other type of uh, diamonds that you get are what we call crystals and or rhinestones and that's what you see here they're like a glass like effect see those okay so that's what we that's what an aurora borealis is probably one of the most commonly asked questions by somebody who's starting new in the craft as to what they are and why are they so special so that's your aurora borealis i have uh, extra i've bought extra ones and you can buy extra ones these are just my spares these happen to be my squares and i've got a whole kitting up um I've got a whole video on how I did these and put them all in here. But these are all my square ones. So if I want to enhance a project, I've got some spare ones here ready to go. Okay, so that's what we mean by um, Aurora Borealis diamonds. Popping them aside, let's keep going with what is a cover minder? Okay. Okay, I'm glad that you asked. Cover minders are generally, they're taken from the cross stitch or needle craft world uh, where they're commonly known as needle minders and they are anything and everything that you can absolutely think of uh, as far as what's on the top. Some people make a, a, a hobby out of collecting them okay these two particular ones were very kindly gifted to me by my good friend sandra west who's a lovely wonderful member of our community and oh, and subscriber to my channel here and you can see that this one here is an angel wing okay and it has a magnet a very strong magnet on the back okay how do we use this i haven't cut this here however let's just say i wanted to bring my plastic down like that a cover minder is there to mind your cover so you get the top part there you put the magnet on the back oh let's just that wasn't a very good demonstration let's bring that there and that will mind your plastic down like so okay whilst you're diamond painting so that's what a cover minder is if you haven't if you're wondering you know why are we all talking about cover minders uh that's two examples there's a million out there but that is typically what a cover minder looks like so washi tape we've spoken about drills we've spoken about what's a light pad okay typically Typically speaking, now this is an A4 light pad. I don't know if it, yep, it's got chart. So this is a light pad and you're gonna see my ring light reflection in it, but that's okay. This is your, this is an A4 light pad. Essentially it goes underneath your, see the difference? All right. Okay, that's without a light pad. And that is, it's a three step or three level intensity and it brings up the drill field for you so that you can see 
clearer if and I always typically work with a light pad see and this is a rechargeable one so and then there's all different sizes this one over here that I'm about to bring across is an A3 this is an A3 one okay so you can see the difference in the sizes I may or may not I haven't decided get an A2 one but you can see the difference in the sizes honestly you're never going to be really diamond painting anything, anything bigger than an A4 so really this is all you really really need however however I have to say I do enjoy having the larger one underneath my I don't know why but I do enjoy having the larger one this one here is a rechargeable one so it gives me up to about I think it's four hours diamond painting without having to charge it this one here comes with that sort of a plug and you plug it in and on and away you go so that's what we use as a or what we refer to as a light pad or, or a tracing pad don't drop your and so on okay so let's move on what's diamond painting storage all right this is a whole world of uh, you can have all different types of storage and indeed on my channel I am doing uh, a series which is my storage quest um, and where I'm investigating and reviewing every single type of storage system that there is out there I'm not going to bring them all out today but just to give you an example what when your diamonds come in your kit they generally come in something like this or they'll come in individual little ziplock bags and things like that this is what we call storage okay so it could be containers like this it could be containers like this or one of my top favorites is containers like this where you do what is called kitting up and kitting down kitting up is the process where you take uh, some way of identifying each of your DMC diamonds and putting a sticker or a label on your containers to identify them that is kitting up and again there's plenty of videos out there to show you how different people kit up and, and the methods and, and the reasonings behind how they kit up this is my kitting up of my uh, painting here that's the overflow because this is the first one here so this is one example of many storage systems that's what we mean by storage okay long-term storage now these are two examples and again I don't have my other long long-term storage system sitting next to me here but these are my special diamonds long-term storage and these are my Aurora Borealis long-term storage okay my spares in here and these are two systems that I've implemented here and there are others as well so that's what we mean by long-term storage okay what do we mean by an inventory sheet so this is the inventory sheet that I have printed off that that's from the custom from um, that I'm doing at the moment and what I do is I actually this is what I use I put it in something like this I'm very very basic but it works really well for me because it's enlarged it's protected it's easy to see easy to reference and I just leave this sitting up to the side and I can easily look at um, the diamonds something which is a small canvas like this I don't do this but this particular painting is the one that I brought out before and it is 100 by 65 and the where these are located are way too far away for me to have to go and reference all the time so I prefer to have something like this so that's what we call an inventory sheet this particular sheet came in the kit itself when I got it okay that's that's what when we refer to an inventory sheet that's what we're talking about it generally will have a photo or a picture of the painting that you've purchased maybe some basic instruct instructions and your and your color chart or legend there so that's what we mean by an inventory sheet there so what is single what are multi places and single places I'm glad you asked 
sometimes in your kits, or sometimes you will, sometimes you won't, receive something like these things, okay? These are what we call multi-places. And they're coming out with all sorts of more fancy ones. Uh, at the These are just plastic, but there are ones that are uh, metal or which will not degrade down because these do go a bit janky and menky after a while. And you can typically see there's printed on there. You probably won't be able to see it too well there. Let me see if I can focus it. You can focus on everything else. There's a little seven on there. Okay, so that's a, what we call a seven placer. What does that mean? That means it's going to pick up seven diamonds in one shot. Okay, this one here is a four placer. Again, same theory behind it. It will pick up four in one shot. This one is, I think, a... I can't see it properly. I'm going to say it's a ten. If that's a seven... I don't typically use this, this one scares me. <laughs> oh, that might even be a 15. I don't know, it's it's a big one. It's a big one, okay? I must, I'm, I'm, I should try it out. But they they can be intimidating, they can be daunting. Uh, it's all about practice. Generally, what we say is these ones here, let me just reach over and grab a pen. This is your single placer single pen a single drill yeah one diamond at a time and some people will happily do an entire canvas single placing they refuse and will not do multi-placing for their own various reasons that is absolutely each to their own here it's about telling you what we mean by multi-placing versus single placing so this allows you multiple diamond placement at a time this is a single placement diamond painting placement at a time. <laughs> so we spoke about kitting up and a little bit about kitting down. So kitting, kitting up is when you're preparing for a canvas or preparing to start a canvas. So you get all your diamonds out of here and put them into your containers ready to do a diamond painting. Kitting down the term that, what that means is taking your diamonds, for example, out of my storage system, when I'm finished the painting, kit, the term kitting down is taking each of these out of here and either doing one of two things with them. Some people discard them and just throw them away, that's fine. Others will have a kitting down or long-term storage system and that's taking each of these out and putting them into that storage more often than not it's in a labeled ziploc bag and then in a storage system so that's what we mean by kitting down so what is an off the canvas project so this is a canvas we've spoken about it this is a canvas here there are many off canvas projects. I uh, didn't bring too many out here, but just to give you one quick example, I haven't finished him, but this is a little dude here. It's a keychain. It's from one of the budget companies and on here are little diamonds that, are, that get stuck on, okay? And I'm yet to finish him on his body, but this is what we call off canvas. Off canvas is anything that is diamond painted that's not on a canvas. Pretty simple definition. Pretty simple definition right there. Um, what is a custom painting? All right, so custom paintings. These, This is not a custom painting, this is by an artist. A custom painting is when you have an image of your own, whether it be a photo, a painting, a whatever it is, uh, a public domain photo, and we'll get to what that is in a minute, a public, um, and you get it commissioned to be printed up as a canvas for you. Okay, so you saw the photo, the, you saw this here, I won't bring it out now, the actual canvas, but this here is a custom painting. It's a painting of my brother's. I got it done up as a canvas. It's the one that I was showing you earlier with all the confetti before. Okay, and that is what we call a custom painting. There are people that are a little bit scared or dubious my best advice to that and I've got a whole video about my journey with custom paintings and you can go have a look at that one uh, 
my best advice with when you are ready to do a custom painting is to find a seller or a company that you can communicate readily with, uh, often enough with, and make sure that you get what we call a render of the painting before you get it printed up. What do I mean by a render? So on a diamond painting website, you will see a picture of a painting as was done by the artist. Some companies will offer you a picture of the render, which means it will show you what the diamond painting looks like after it's been diamond painted. And they are different. They should be very, very similar, but they will be slightly different. And a render will give you the idea and sense of uh, if there's pixelation, color shading, and all of that sort of thing. So that's what we mean essentially by a custom painting. Talking about paintings and so on, we have what is called licensed artwork. What is licensed artwork? We have artists that are out there. This is not going to be a what's right and what's wrong and what you, I'm not, preaching from any any pulpit here as to what you should and should not be doing okay this is just basic explanation right now uh, there are artists out there that have their paintings and they sell them or they sell the licenses to diamond painting companies i'm just getting that mess out of the way okay this is an example this particular artist is sybil art her name is sybil art and she is licensed to crafties and also another company called Diamond Shop. Okay. Every time a painting, a licensed piece of artwork is purchased from the company, the artist is paid for her art. And I am a big advocate of that. Okay. A massive advocate of that. Unfortunately, not, well, not around the world do all countries recognize copyright, nor do they abide by them. And so what they will do is they will get this picture, for example, without any permission, without any license or anything like that, copy it and make diamond paintings out of it and sell it. And that's what we refer to as stolen artwork or unlicensed artwork in the community. Again, it's a divisive subject. There are people that have very, very strong opinions on it. My only thing that I say to you is that if that is something that is important to you, be aware of it as a new person in, in the craft, that if you don't wish to be supporting companies that steal licensed artwork, okay, which is effectively plagiarism and taking food and, and so on from, when I say food, it's taking income from those that have actually produced the artwork, if that's something that's important to you, be aware of it. There are ways to do checks. I'm not going to get into it now. There are ways to do checks to see uh, if the image that you're looking at is actually stolen. My recommendation is if it's something that's important to you, stick to those that actually advertise the fact that they do have licensed artwork. There are many, many of them around. Uh, Crafties is one, Diamond Art Club, Uniquely Yours Down Under, Create Love Share, uh, Dime Moon Shop, uh, Distracted by Diamonds. There's a lot of them. And if you, I know that there's a couple of videos that have been put out uh, where other creators have listed, actually listed uh, all the ones that they know of as far as having licensed artwork. So if you are going to be purchasing from places such as AliExpress, uh, Etsy, Amazon, all those sorts of places, um, all the budget, all the budget di uh, diamond painting shops, they do have stolen artwork on there. So just be aware um, that it is there and that's what the definition between the two is, okay? When it comes to YouTube world, <clears throat> pardon me, we talk about a few different things on there as well. So what does it mean, and, and this is not by no means, this is just to let you know what, it, what, what different definitions mean. So quite a lot of YouTube creators uh, we have on there, and I say we because I do, uh, we have on there means by which we offer 
those who wish to support us as creators to to do so and there's a few different ways one is uh, something called like buy me a coffee whereby you're not you're buying almost like a virtual cup of coffee so if you hear a creator say i have buy me a coffee that's what it means they'll normally have a link down in their description below and uh, you can buy the equivalent of a virtual one coffee two coffees three or whatever it is for a nominated amount and it's uh, get, and, and generally the creators and I will say I do this uh, will put that money back into the channel in order to produce uh, better content or purchase products to review for you so that you know that you can make yourself an informed decision there are other ways that those creators that have reached over the 1,000 subscriber mark and I think it's 4,000 watch hours or something like that there's criteria you need to meet but those creators that have reached those milestones can then look at opening up what they call YouTube memberships or Patreon. Generally, those are also avenues to which uh, you as a subscriber can assist that creator by joining. And generally in the memberships and, and the Patreons, the creators will offer more content, more in-depth content or more personalized content. Speaking for myself personally, I offer on that platform an insight into my for my patreons uh, a little bit more about Gracie you know a little bit more about my personal life and I also use it on the reverse and we have great conversations and I get to know them more personally as well and there's giveaway you know different people do different things I will have giveaways for my patreons I'll do zoom calls for my patreons I'll do special unboxings with my patreons uh, all that sort of thing the one thing that I'm very, very proud to say is that regardless of what happens on my Patreon channel, the rest of my channel is always been consistently the same. It's not that anyone else who's not on Patreon gets anything less. It's actually been quite consistent. So that's what we mean by uh, that sort of thing. Now, as a subscriber, you are under absolutely no obligation to join any of those things or support any creator financially the fact that you're watching their videos actually does help them did you know that just by watching their videos that actually helps them helping them even more by hitting the like button and putting a comment helps them immensely it helps with them being able to uh, elevate their video and their channel within the YouTube world it's to do with all the scientific algorithms and all that sort of thing uh, however, if you've stumbled on my channel, the reason you may have stumbled on my channel is because it may have come up in your feed. The reason that it's come up in your feed is that people in the past have commented and are continuing to comment and it helps build the channel. So when we speak of, you know, thanking you for your support, just that you are watching, commenting and liking, that helps build the channel, that helps the creator, okay? Uh, I think the, one of the best things that I've actually done, the one thing that I've actually done, and I can't express this enough, if you, is I've actually purchased a YouTube. Uh, I've got um, what is it? I'm a premium YouTube premium. I'm loving life. I am totally loving life. If you, you if you are one that are going to be on YouTube and watching a lot of videos like I am and was and you don't want to be watching all the ads, okay? Watching the ads is actually the free, the best way to, to support a channel, okay? Supporting a channel by watching the ads, you don't, it costs you nothing, and watching those ads that come up on your, on your, on your video, that actually helps the creator financially as well. Don't get me wrong, we're not all retiring just because of people watching ads. It's not that much, but it, every little bit helps. <laughs> but I've purchased YouTube Premium. That doesn't mean that, and I don't need to watch any ads. However, by watching someone's video who does have ads on there, I'm automatically, I'm automatically supporting them purely because I have got YouTube Premium and I have never looked back. I... I love it. 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 So if that's something you want to investigate, YouTube Premium, by all means, look into it. It means that, you know, you will be supporting all the creators equally uh, because you're watching them and even though you don't need to be watching the ads because they won't appear on your, on your stream, 
they will be getting remunerated anyway. Okay, one of the other things that I wanted to talk about was uh, if you hear the word affiliate or ambassador, okay? Now, to me, I speak for me and me alone. If I am an, actually an affiliate for two companies, one of them is Create Love Share, the other is Uniquely Yours Down Under, both of which are Australian companies and both of which ship overseas, okay? I will tell you straight up always that if you choose to use the links that I provide, along with the coupon code and discount code that I have to provide for you, because I do have a discount that I can pass on to you for those two companies, if you choose to use those, I feel it's my obligation to be transparent to tell you that I do have a small commission given to me for that. Now, if you've seen my unboxings of these companies along the way, you will see that I am brutally honest. I don't sit there and tell you that the companies have got everything perfect. Not at all. Not at all. Uh, it's irrelevant that I'm a, an affiliate. My job, my responsibility, my obligation, I feel to you as a creator, and this is, uh, and I'm speaking to the new people on the platform, is this is something for you to, not on the platform, beg my pardon, the new people in the craft, if, as you start watching videos and you're hearing and watching people who are affiliates, be mindful and be sure that, uh, you know, I'm not calling anyone out at all not at all most most creators that i know are quite non-biased uh, however i can only speak for myself and i will not be um, swayed by the fact that i'm an affiliate i will not be swayed by the fact that if i get something for free that i will give it a perfect review because that's not what i'm about so i feel that if you are as an affiliate it is my obligation to tell you each and every single time i do bring that up that I do make a small commission. I think it's only right and fair. And you are no under no obligation. You know, you you know, I feel like I'm not being, you know, I'm not hiding anything from that, so to speak. Some people are affiliates or ambassadors without making any commission, and that's okay. What they are is they're ambassadors. They will have a coupon code for you. They may have, or they may be an affiliate without making any commission, but they will still have a coupon code. And what that is, is they may receive, for example, a free painting every now and then, or they may be, they might be people who strongly love that company and they've created that uh, relationship with the company. And the company will give them a code to use, which you can use in your order. And that shows the company just how much traffic is coming through and and potentially in the future then discussing down the track whether or not there's going to be a financial exchange um, through affiliate ship so there's different terms for you to be aware of okay ambassador affiliate commissions all that sort of thing okay so that's that's what we mean by affiliate on uh on the on the youtubes on the youtubes we talk about what is a stash okay so in this craft if you're just starting you will quickly see and learn that people have what we call a stash and that stash could be diamond painting stashes like they've got a whole bunch of either uncompleted or completed diamond paintings and we call it a stash and there are those that are with 10 in a stash, 20 in a stash, two thousands in a stash. And there is no number that is the right number. It is the number that is your right to have and whatever you feel comfortable in having. And no one should ever judge anyone, in my personal opinion, for having any sort of stash. The other sorts of stashes that we could have are pen stashes. We could have cover minder stashes. We could have a wax stash. We could have washi stashes any facet or any parts of what you've seen today in what i've been showing you people can collect and do collect and that's there are two parts of and as a lot of people will i'm sure agree with me there are two facets to this craft one is the doing one is the collecting and you can do one or the other and you can certainly do both and no one should ever judge you and you should never feel guilty for choosing either one of those options and enjoying it for what it is. Uh, so that's what we call a stash. Oh, just going back to 
uh, the financial support, if you uh, happen to fall on someone uh, across someone's live stream and you see someone uh, put up a super sticker or a super chat, when you are in the live chat of a live stream, you'll see down in the bottom right hand corner a little dollar sign and that's your opportunity if you wish to during that live chat whereby the creator is actually going live and able to chat with you and interact with you and they may have the camera down on their diamond painting, they might be doing a diamond painting or as I like to do my, my lives, I do them face to face, okay, because I, I just that's just the way I am. I like to do them face to face and I will read comments and, and interact and talk and things like that. And some people will put a super sticker or a super chat and and that's a way of another way of supporting the channel. And generally, um, it's uh, not generally, always for me, it's so super appreciated. Um, so, so much appreciated. Okay, so what's, what is a partial? So this particular diamond painting is what we call a full diamond painting kit. It is completely, the, the, your pasting area is completely full all the way around. You're going to diamond paint from this end to this end, from this end to this end, and it's all going to be filled up with diamonds. What is a partial diamond painting? Well, this is just one very quick example. This particular one is from Diamond Dots. It's um, uh, it's not finished, so you can see that there's still the plastic on there. A partial diamond painting means that you are not going to be diamond painting from here to here, or here to here. It is, this part here is actually not sticky, see? It's not sticky, however, this here is, okay? So it is a partial uh, diamond painting. Some people like them, some people don't, some people, uh, you know are on the fence i don't mind them at all they're actually quite good especially if you are starting in this craft just to get a feel for whether or not you actually like the process of putting the diamonds down on a painting and then you can expand onto a full size other times also uh, the picture themselves um, they lend really well to being a partial because the backgrounds are quite muted or they might be patterned even there's all different sorts around and you know, and it, and it elevates the picture even more. For example, this one here, I have a very similar rose, uh, which is in this series, and that's why I got this one, because it matches it. But this one here, for example, I know the other one that I did has got roses on it, very similar with a black background. And what it does is it actually makes it look even more 3D, because it's got a flat background, but then you've got the diamonds that lift it up even more so. So that's what a partial diamond painting is right there compared to your full full drill. Now, not many, I don't think I've actually seen any other uh, diamond painting companies, but this particular one, this is Diamond Dots, as I said, so on this particular one, this is where they say the design area, but if you flick it around to the other side, it tells you the diamond area. So see how all the black is missing from here? Okay, if you happen to be into Diamond Dots and so on, they will show you exactly how much you will be diamond painting, okay? I, as I said, I don't know of any other companies that will show you that sort of detail, but that's the definition of what a partial diamond painting is. Okay. Just with the Patreons, I just want to say a shout out to my Patreons. And this is one of the things that I do do with my Patreons on the channel. And that is that I had asked them, I had told them that I was going to be doing this video and I asked for them uh, for their input onto, I gave them a list of what I had come up with as far as topics and I had some of the Patreons contribute. So I want to say a special shout out to those that uh, helped me out putting together this video and that's part of being uh, on my Patreon channel as well. So. Uh, you get to help me make the videos in that, from that perspective and there's many more little projects that I've got in store for them. Lots of fun little things to do together. So uh, thank you so much for contributing to the topics to discuss with this video. I think we're kind of winding up and I hope I haven't kind of gone all over the place but these are the sorts of things that I just find that are the most common, common of questions uh, that have been asked over the amount over time. Uh, this one here, 
is working up really, really quickly. I've gotten a one, I'd say maybe, I don't know, one quarter of the way through here. Um, if anyone else has anything else to contribute, I please implore you, uh, if you have been in the craft for quite some time, to please uh, add to this video uh, in the comment section below. Again, I do remind you that if you have heard something today that you would like some further explanation or a how-to video, as opposed to a what is a video, you know, a what is explanation, I'd be more than happy to do a, a compilation of all those sorts of, and maybe do it all as one little video together. With all that being said, if you've gotten to the end, hey, I am so happy that you have, and thank you so much for joining me. I hope you've gotten some useful information out of this. If you've got any questions that you want some further answers on as far as uh, what is, again, throw them down in the comments. I absolutely invite you to do so. These are, this is, these are my interpretations, my definitions. They're not set in stone. These are just what I've come to learn in, in the, what, 20 odd months that I've been doing this craft. And the, what month are we in? In the nine months that I've been actually on YouTube. So for all those that have watched to this end, thank you so much. I would love if you wanted to put a hammer or a spanner or something like that in the <laughs> comments section below. That would be awesome. <laughs> that would be awesome just to let me know that you've actually enjoyed it to the end. That would be absolutely awesome, you know, because it's all about Look, I don't know. No, actually, yeah, that'll do. A hammer or a spanner. I don't know why I came up with that. Random, I know, right? <laughs> but if you've gotten to the end, thank you so much. Wherever you are in your part of the world, I hope you're looking after each other. I hope you're looking after yourselves. Have each other's backs. It's so, so super important. So super important. Have an amazing rest of your day. A great rest of your week. And until I see you next time, I'm going to send you all much, much love. And ciao, ciao for now.